Hey there, Thomas from Video Mantis. In this blog, we're going to talk all about how to get high quality audio in your Zoom meetings or any other platform that you're using. And the idea is this, in 2020 and beyond, we are doing a lot more digital audio meetings. We're not going to office buildings, we're doing them in our homes. And one of the things that I'm noticing is a lot of people have these big, huge rooms and they sound really reverberant or they sound really distant from the camera or they sound like this right here. I'll give you an example. And this does not sound good. You don't want people listening to audio that sounds like this because what happens is you start to get disengaged. You start to turn off. You start clicking for another video or you start playing on that second screen, if you know what I mean. So the idea is that you want to make sure that you're engaging your audience with high quality audio that keeps them centered in on your voice. And that's really going to help. So there's a couple things to know. The first thing is that generally if you are sitting right in front of your computer, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy something if you can't afford it right now. I understand that right now times are tough. But there are a few things that you can do to your environment to make sure that you reduce the reverberance because one of the biggest problems that a lot of people are having online is that I see that they're sitting in these rooms that are just gargantuan huge. They're sitting in the middle or they're sitting on a couch and all I see are just walls with nothing on them. I don't see curtains, I don't see pillows around them, nothing. And what that means is that that microphone that is right in the middle of your screen on your laptop has to compete with all of the reflections that it's hearing all over the room instead of just focusing on your voice. So one of the things that you can do is remove some of the reverb and the slapback that's happening in the room. You can put furniture pads or blankets over your table that your laptop's going to be on so you don't get any reflection off of the table. You can put uh, blankets over chairs and put them around you just to soak up some of that reverb. The whole thing is when you clap, you don't want it to be like clap, like you're in a church. If you clap and you hear reverb for a second or two, and it's not just like, like what I have right here where it just dies out instantly, well that means that people are going to just hear that muddiness all the time. So the only way that you can get rid of that is by A, removing the reverb physically from the room by putting yourself inside of a room or to get a microphone closer to the source. Whenever we're working in cathedrals or churches or places that have huge reverb potential, what we do is we take the microphone and instead of putting it like for example on the solar plexus, we move it up a little bit higher. Like for example on me, it's right around in this area. In fact, I bumped it, you might have heard that. But the idea is that if you get a microphone closer, then you're going to have a much easier time uh, hearing and having that more direct sound for your listeners. It will keep them more engaged. Now, what if you are moving on from the internal microphone or honestly, the internal camera of your computer because they're good, but they're not great. Uh, what you can do is you can move over to something like an external webcam. This is called a Logitech Brio 4K. They look really good as long as they have a lot of light. So an idea is move near a window and have yourself being lit from the side and have this pointing so it has a lot of brightness and black shadows and it's going to look really, really nice. But again, this is something that's being put directly on top of your laptop, so you're still susceptible to the noise and the distance factors that we have before. So if you want to venture into higher quality sound, we have to take the sound away from the computer and physically come externally from it. So the idea from here is we will use either an external microphone that has a USB interface so it can plug directly in and the computer just understands it, you select it and you're good to go, or you can use what is called a digital audio interface and that's what I'm using right now. So what I'm doing is I'm using this audio going into what is called a Sound Devices Mix Pre 10T and from there using this as an audio interface into the computer. This gives me a lot of 
extra abilities and it's one of the reasons why I like to bring this up because generally you only need one channel you need the microphone that's on you that's going into the recorder but if you need to do other things like let's say you're a yoga instructor and you need to have music in the background well if you have a mix pre 3 you can use something like an additional iPad or phone that's older that you're not using and you can connect a cable into the additional tracks of your recorder. Then play the music and mix those into your recording. Now what about if you're not gonna be on the screen? If you're not gonna be on the screen, I highly recommend looking into some type of a dynamic headset with boom. This right here is the Audio-Technica BPHS1, and it's what I use for a lot of my podcasts when I bring people outside my house and I do interviews. The idea is that it is very comfortable to put on your head and you can plug in and physically listen as well. And then you have the ability to put it right up on your lips. And as long as it's not bumping your mouth or moving around, this is going to sound so clean and direct and on axis and just, oh, it sounds so good and clean. I can't stress that enough. Anytime I use these, everybody goes, man, your audio sounds really good and clean. Well, yeah, I can't get any closer than that. This is the kind of stuff that if you're doing like, for example, a NASCAR event or, or something that has a loud environment, you can use these and it's still going to hone in on the voice. You're still going to hear a little bit of that ambience in the background, but you're not going to hear it as much as the voice that's being prominently talked into. Now, when I say a little bit of noise, I'm talking about like, for example, at a carnival, you're going to hear a little bit of a murmur in the background. If you're in your house and you're using this and it's relatively quiet, you're not going to have a problem. This is going to sound so good and clean. So if you're doing something like, for example, you had a Logitech camera over and you're doing a course on soldering and you had this over and you had your Audio-Technica BPHS-1 on, you could be using the audio for this and then looking of the camera through this, showing this to them and having them hear this audio and be able to use your hands and do whatever you need. So it just depends on what you're doing. If, if you don't need to see yourself, this is a great option. And then all you need to do is figure out how to interface it into the computer. I really like these Sound Devices Mix Pre's because they sound stellar and they're so small and they're so cheap and they are so versatile in what they do. And then they also give you the option option to step up your game. I see a lot of people that are like playing those little boom boxes and playing their yoga music or their dance music behind on a couch and just throwing it behind them and just trying to talk over it. And th that's not really how you should do it. If you can find a way to blend it and, and show your, you know, your client base or your people in your meetings that you really care about them and being able to connect with them. Because the voice is all about connecting. Sound is something that delivers that emotional aspect to people. And the more um, close that it can be and, and present and warm and, and, and feeling that you can put into it, the more you're gonna engage with your audience, the more they're gonna be engaged with you. They're gonna be talking to you more. They're gonna to wanna to raise their hands and talk and work harder in that workout, whatever you're doing. So why don't we step over to the computer now and talk a little bit more about the settings inside of the computer. Okay, so now we're on our computer and let's go ahead and check out our sound preferences for a second. This will be the same type of concept whether you're on a PC or a Mac. And the idea is that you have an input and an output for the audio settings of your computer. So the idea is that we want to look at our input level and see that we have our internal microphone. Or for example, I have a Logitech Brio that's on top of my monitor, so that's what I want to use for this. And then I also want to make sure that I bring up the input level so it's nice and hot. We don't want to have it slamming like this, but we also don't want to have it buried in the ground, which is called the noise floor. So what we want to do is, you know, get the level good and clean, you know, somewhere around there is good. That way if I talk a little bit louder, it's never really peaking, but it's good and right in the hot 50-60 percentile of the input range of this microphone. So from here, let's go ahead and open up Zoom and continue on and we'll talk a little bit more about other settings and things that we can do.
So let's go ahead and click on settings. And the first one that I want to talk to you about is the one that's on general, which is called stop my video and audio when my display is off or my screensaver begins. The idea with this one is you never want to have an accident where you forget to end a meeting and people are still in that meeting and your screensaver goes on and you're dancing around in your underwear. It's never happened to me. Don't let it happen to you. So just turn that on so if your screensaver goes on, you're not going to get in trouble. So next we're going to go over to audio and see that we have a speaker and a microphone tab. So I know that I've been talking about microphones for a while. We actually need to stop for a minute and talk about speakers because one of the problems is that if a microphone can hear the speaker, then Zoom has to create fancy algorithms to basically cancel out that speaker audio that's coming out. And it's very complicated and all it does is degrade the quality of your voice. So if you don't want that to have happen, what you need to do is make sure that you plug in headphones in your computer. And when I say headphones, by the way, I don't necessarily mean those huge audio technicas. Yes, you can absolutely use these. Man, they're gonna sound great. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to have something this big. Having something small and comfortable like these Bose lightweight earbuds or whatever works for you. Take a look in the description below for a couple examples. The idea is that you don't necessarily need to have something that sounds amazing. You need to have something that is comfortable because if you're gonna be wearing them for a long time, you want them to sound good, but also feel good and you just kinda wanna forget that they're there after a while. Okay, so back to the microphone settings. First thing to look at is that we have a few different options. We have our built-in microphone, or we have our Logitech Brio, which is what we're listening to right now. This is the audio coming from the webcam that's right here. And by the way, if you notice that the way I do my meetings is that I have my white psych and I let people see me on the actual white psych. But I kind of twisted the room a little bit to show you that I'm just in my garage, it's cold, but I still make sure that I have good audio no matter what is going on. Even if that looked bad behind me, I would still want to make sure that it doesn't sound cavernous like some garages do. So you still want to have that good connection. And to me, having this Logitech Brio this far away doesn't really do that. So what I needed to do is connect uh, my external recorder and put a microphone that is physically on me. So let's go ahead and switch to that. Okay. So now you're hearing the audio that is coming from the Mix Pre. And if you notice, I don't even have the ability to adjust this because it's physically adjusted from the recorder over there. If I turn up or down the gain, you're going to see it accordingly. And the idea with using the Mix Pre is now that I have not only my input, but if I have guests, I can connect them to other inputs or I could have music come in, whatever it is. Yes, it's all going to come in on the same microphone input, I'm going to have to mix it on the mixer, but that's what it is. It's a physical mixer. When you're using an external interface that has multiple inputs, that will basically be disabled because you have so much more control on the physical device itself, being able to turn up and down the gains accordingly, that that doesn't really matter. But this is honestly so much more than most people need. Generally what people are going to do is they're just going to plug in their external microphone and they're going to have it right outside of their screen. You still need to get the microphone close and if you can't get it close then don't use that type of microphone and instead get a microphone that you can physically wear and then run the cable to your computer and do that instead. Okay so moving on from the speaker and the microphone the next few is join audio by computer when joining a meeting and then mute microphone when joining a meeting. Uh, my opinion is that you want to have the first one unchecked and the second one checked. And that means that when you join a meeting, your audio is not active until you physically connect and unmute it. Then from there, we have the quick key, which says press and hold space key to temporarily unmute yourself. That's a quick way if you hold in the space bar, it will unmute your microphone, you can talk, and then the second you let it go, 
it will then mute yourself as well. The idea is that when you're adding a meeting, you don't want to add to what is called the noise floor. If you mute yourself when you're not speaking, then the rest of the people in the meeting have a much more pleasurable experience. So next, let's go ahead and click on advanced because there's another few settings that we need to look at. And the first one says, show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. So the idea with this is that when you start, it will give you the option to enable the original sound of the microphone instead of any processing that's going on. Generally, it's a good idea to have that selected if you're recording anything that you need clean for a project or a recording. The next few options deal with audio processing, and you'll notice that it says suppress persistent background noise and suppress intermittent background noise. The idea with both of these settings are if you are, yet again, working in a noisy environment or a, a place that has something that's going to be uh, problematic with your voice. When I say problematic, it means is it going to be competing with your voice? If you have something that's going to be competing with your voice, then you need to take that intermittent background noise and persistent background noise and turn it on. But if you're going to be in your house by yourself and nobody's going to be bothering you during these interviews, then you actually want to turn those off because those are always looking for something that's causing a problem to suppress and to turn off. And what it's going to do is it's going to listen to normal things and it's actually going to pull artifacts and things out of your voice that you don't necessarily want it to do. So when it comes to echo, the first thing is I have a little bit of beef because it's not really echo. It's called reverberation, and it means something that trails on longer. So you get the direct sound of my voice to your ears, but then my voice also comes out and it hits all of the reverb in the room, and that bounces and hits the microphone too. So, and it hits at different times and creates these reverb tails that are really long. So if you're in a really big room that doesn't have a lot of padding, it's going to sound really reverberant or echoic as people call it. Don't call it echoic, it's reverberant. So in Zoom, we have the option to do auto or aggressive. My recommendation is leave this on auto and then get into a room that doesn't have a lot of reverb. It's literally better for you to go into a closet and light yourself simply uh, over the top of your computer and put a whiteboard behind you if it's going to sound quieter and cleaner for your students or for whoever you're doing your meetings for. What you don't want to have is have people having to lean in, which doesn't help anyways, trying to discern what you're saying because you're swimming in so much reverb they can't hear the difference. The only way to help with reverb is to get rid of it or to get a microphone that is closer to the source. Okay, so we're gonna go through a few more screens just to make sure that everything is good in terms of audio. Last one down here in chat, play sound when I receive a new message. If you are recording interviews with important people uh, or you're in a group setting where people are going to be typing things repeatedly, you might want to turn this one off. And the reason being is because you don't want this to interject into your audio if you need it clean. And finally, muting notifications while I'm in a meeting or internal call is a good idea. Next, we're going to go to recording. And it's a good idea to make sure that you have a place where this audio and video can be recorded. So yes, it might be on your internal drive, or if not, get an external drive to make sure that you have enough space to save your recordings if you're doing that as well. And if you're recording interviews, a good idea is to make sure that you record a separate audio file for each participant. This makes sure that if you're doing bulk interviews with multiple people, that Zoom is recording each person's file separately to give to you to make sure that you have them clean for post-production. This really helps in post. Last but not least, if you go over to the statistics tab, 
you have the ability to look at your audio statistics. And pretty much what it's gonna tell you about is your latency or jitter issues. Uh, the biggest thing to know is that if the numbers are really, really high, then you may have a problem with the bandwidth of your internet connection. And then you may either need to move closer to your router or contact your internet provider if you're having more problems. And that's it. So from here, we're ready to start a new meeting. Okay, you'll see that we brought up our camera now. And well, actually we need to switch it over to the Brio. You're seeing the uh, garage that I shoot in. But here's this, and this is again behind the scenes when I'm done, I would move this over so you would be able to see me like so with the uh, camera right behind the white psych. But until then, the last few things that we need to look at is making sure that we have the proper microphone selected, be it our mix pre audio interface or an external mic. Then from there, we would select the proper video. And if we ever needed to, the turn on original sound is up here as well. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video on getting proper audio settings for your Zoom meetings or just meetings in general. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and please consider subscribing. Video Mantis is all about bridging the gap between students and professionals. And it doesn't matter if you're a producer or a director or a sound engineer. The idea is that we need to create products that connect with our clients. And basically, sound is something that is very special to me. The idea is that if you're creating a commercial for something new that you've made, that you want to show to the world, wouldn't you want to have the best voice to put that product forward? There's something that happens when people do not use proper audio. Like for example, if I flip back to our DSLR example that we have here, this sounds so distant that within a few moments you get tired of listening to me. Where if I bring it back, you feel the connection and you feel the warmth in my voice and this can help to sell a product. So let me teach you how to record sound. It's a very complex thing, but I found a way to break it down and make it a little bit easier for everyone else that just wants to get back to the product. Thank you so much for watching. Check out videomantis.com. We'll see you soon. Take care.